Hey guys, Andy here. So I've been playing with my Pixel 4 for a few days now and the main review will come in the next sort of week or so, but I'm also gonna do smaller videos on aspects of the Pixel 4. Today we're looking at the camera um, and just kind of how it performs. There's a few different things that interested me with the camera on the Pixel 4, AI based in many ways. So one was the AI based white balance, which looks really clever. So you must have seen or taken photos where there's lots of blue lights around and your face comes out looking blue. Um, the idea being the AI will recognize that's a face that shouldn't be blue and it will set the white balance for you. So that sounds really clever. I've not really had a chance to test that if I'm honest, I've not been in that sort of situation. Um, the dual exposure I really like. So up to now, that's only really been possible for me at least, to do in post-process in something like Photoshop, where you can take a highlighted area and lower it down to dim it a little bit. You can take the shadowed area and brighten it up a bit independently. I think all of the phones, you can only do brighter or darker across the whole picture. So for me, I thought that's a really fantastic option to add in, um, and especially that you can see it in real time when you're taking the photos. So let's start with uh, stills, and we'll come onto video after that. So we'll start off with photos that I would describe as being taken in good conditions. Um, I think with most top end phones these days, this is just what you'd expect really. I don't know that the Pixel 4 would stand out against my OnePlus 7 Pro or a Galaxy S10 Plus or a Note 10 or anything like that um, in good conditions because I mean even cheap devices will give a good photo when the lighting's good, you can hold the camera nice and still, um, you know, you'll get the colours that'll pop hopefully, reasonable crisp. I mean, that's you, that's possibly a lower light because we're in the tube, but um, generally it's going to be good. We move on to portrait photos, and I would say they were really good. I only took a couple with this with the rear facing camera, so it's using both double lenses, and actually it's a really tight, crisp image around me. You, yeah, there's no sort of blurriness on my ears or anything like that the hairs individual hairs stand out really well I think it's really quite impressive port uh, portrait photo which Google did say that improved upon uh, if we take that opportunity to switch around to the front facing camera again still in quite good conditions um, looks pretty good the wider angle I think is a welcome addition well I say an addition it's not because they subtracted didn't they they did have two lenses in the pixel 3 um, and it is only the one but it's a nice wide one and we see the final one in low light, still looking pretty good, which leads me into the low light images. The first one's not that dark, but you can see car lights are on because uh, it is getting a bit darker. Um, and again, low light generally, I thought it looked very good. This is all without using night sight, obviously. And we're going to come on to night sight momentarily. You will get some motion blur in cars that are moving in low light because it will have to still slow down the shutter speed. That's unavoidable really. Uh, what I did notice with night sight, and it's no different, I think we've all seen a lot of night sight, I won't spend a lot of time on it, but if it's not needed you won't see much of a difference. So the one with it off and then the one with it on aren't greatly different. You can tell the sky looks a little bit lighter when it's on and again you're going to get some motion blur if there's things that are moving. But we move into, I mean, this was basically pretty much pitch black. Um, so it did a quite a good job without night sight of, of getting, using the one solitary light to get some detail. But with night sight on, I mean, that could be not daytime, but it's, it's, it is a stunning picture. Having said that, there's a lot of noise and we do lose a lot of detail um, around the picture. But you get something that... Uh, is recognizable I suppose um, and in better ways in, in some ways sorry better than your eyes themselves would see that's gonna lead me on to the astro photography now one thing I liked with this is it's just all automatic so I put it into a, a uh, on a tripod I pointed up at the sky and I pressed the shutter and it said right three minutes and it just started counting down so I left it for three minutes and then I did it again um, and I guess probably my sky isn't as suited to maybe they use the demos they're probably going out to the desert somewhere in america to take the demo photos but if you zoom in you can actually see it's, it's very pretty you can see the stars twinkling away in the night sky i then also want to just touch on the dual exposure which i sort of mentioned earlier on this this photo i did take a bit of time to brighten up some of the darker areas it does look a slightly processed photo um but it was it, it just works really well it really is quite impressive i believe then we're going to move on to super zoom. 
Now you double tap on the screen, you can slide in all the way up to an eight time zoom. You see a little little squirrel here. That's not a bad picture, but when you zoom in, you start realizing it looks a little bit more oil painting. Um, but even so, that's quite impressive from the distance away that I actually was, considering it's only a two times actual optical lens on the camera. And here we are, um, wherever this was, Houston, I think. One thing that someone mentioned, which I can see being the case, that it seems to deal with text better. So when I super zoomed on the chalkboard, even when we bring that up to 200%, that's still quite crisp. Um, so super zoom works basically using the movement, this tiny movement as you're holding the camera to, I think, just basically fill in the pixels. Um, and it is impressive. It really is impressive. We're going to move on then to the video performance. Um, there's less to say about the video to be fair because um, there's not so much trickery and technology going on it's just straight up video and i think you know i'm not the first to say i think google haven't really thought much about video they put a lot of effort into stills and photography um, and not so much into video generally it's still good though it's just not as amazing as still footage uh, when panning you get a little bit of jitter from time to time, but generally actually it's quite smooth. They've definitely made improvements since, uh, I think it was, I forget if it was the original Pixel or Pixel 2, where it had the sort of jittery warping effect as you pan, where it struggled to decide if you were panning or if you were wobbling, and therefore the image stabilization was fighting against you slowly panning across. Uh, we see here the front facing camera, quick bit of that, everything looks good with that. No problems with the mic. In fact, the mic has generally sounded pretty good in the bits that I've used um, with, uh, on the Pixel 4. Here we are, we're gradually moving into the lower lights territory. And still, actually, the quality here you know, in the underground, that's very good. The colours all are very good. The colours are sort of nice and crisp and pop, but at the same time, they're quite realistic. And now we are really getting into low light. And I would say the low light performance is good. I mean, we've got a bit of noise going on. And we're losing a little bit of detail but it does do a really good job of uh, replicating the colors and keeping the colors strong but not being too influ influenced by different light so it's a little disappointing that it's not as amazing and you know everyone will comment the iphone still lead the way in video quality i can't comment because i haven't used that but i can believe it um, i wouldn't deny it so unfortunately I can't compare the Pixel 4 to all the other devices out there at the moment because I just don't have the access to them. I'd love to be able to play with the iPhone 11, I'd love to have the Note 10, um, the latest Huawei, I just haven't got them. So all I can do is look at what the results are that it gives me. And I think they're really good, they're really solid. I think it's still um, up there as it's got to be in the discussion for the best camera phones that there are at the moment. Um, the low light, fantastic, night sight is still very, very good. The astrophotography, it's a bit of fun, why not? Um, the super zoom, I'm not totally sold on, and I do still wonder if you can do that with a one times and a two times, why can't you do it with a one times and a ultra wide angle and then use the super zoom to get to like a four times or something? Um, but the results, they're reasonable, they're not great, they're reasonable. I do really like the dual uh, exposure, um, and the software obviously is nice, quick, and slick, giving generally good results. The video, I would love for them to spend a bit of time trying to improve the video um, because general opinion is still the iPhone leads the way in video. Uh, as you can see, the results are not fantastic. They're still very good, they're just not fantastic. So all in all, still really, really, very good camera. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please leave them in the comments down below. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Check out other videos on my channel. But for now, my name's Andy and I'll catch you all again soon.